Welcome back to Downton Kitchen, a show where we bring some of the most notable dishes from Downton Abbey right into your home. I'm Chef Nini Nguyen, and in this episode, we're kicking things off with a British favorite, roasted quail with bread sauce. Mmm. Oh, that's lovely. Let's get started. Let's talk about quail. <laughs> Fancy. I can't believe my luck, can you? It's such a tasty delicacy that stood the test of time and is pretty much a mainstay at the Downton Kitchen. We see it as a reoccurring dish in the elaborate meals served at Downton. What's amazing about this recipe is how it addresses the common issue with quail. A complication. Its tendency to dry out. I'd rather eat pebbles. This method is an absolute game changer when it comes to making juicy, downton worthy quail for your own dinner party. How exciting! <laughs> this dish serves four as an appetizer or two as a main dish, which is a few too many for me to eat alone. So I'm excited to welcome today's guest chef, Kevin Doyle, or some of you might know him as Mr. Mosley. Oh. I do beg your pardon, Your Majesty. It's quite enough, Mosley. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Are you excited to cook with me today? I'm very excited. <laughs> what are we doing? We're making quail and bread sauce, something I have not had yet. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> I, I hope it's not going to be based on luck because I'm going to have you to help me. So okay. the first thing we're going to do today, and I hope you're ready to get your hands oh, dirty, yes. is we're going to make the bread sauce. I've never had bread sauce before, but have you? Well, yeah, we have it at Christmas oh. with, with turkey. Turkey. But I've never made it. Okay. Well, fair game. Well, this is a lot smaller than turkey. <laughs> it's a lot smaller. <laughs> okay. okay. So the first thing I want to dive into is our bread. I guess we can't have bread sauce without the bread. Of course. And so I'm going to give you the task of cutting this bread. We want to basically get just the inside. So we're going to trim off all of the crust. Okay. And then we're going to chop this up, maybe about crouton size. Okay. Do you guys eat croutons here? Yeah. Okay. I had to make sure. We're gonna chop it up and we're gonna put it in this bowl right here. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna have you just kind of soak it with some of that hot water in that really big kettle in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and we just wanna kind of wet it just enough so that it moistens the stale bread. Right, okay. Sounds good? You think yes. you can handle that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. So while you do that, I'm going to infuse our milk. So I have here some milk and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to infuse it with a few key ingredients. We have here some clove. Essential. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. That much I do know. I like this. You're like the police. <laughs> so I have onion, bay leaf, and mace, which I've never seen whole. I've always seen it in powdered form in America, but this is an outer almost shell for the nutmeg. And it really has that same kind of smell to it. Smell? Very similar. Yeah. Yeah. Do you approve of this one? Because you didn't do, say yes I do, or no. I do. I, I didn't recognize it as mace. Yeah. I've, I've only ever seen it in powder form as well. Okay, good, good. So I'm not alone. I, I really like this because normally in America, we put nutmeg in a lot of cream sauces. And I guess mace makes more sense in this form. So I'm going to take a couple of cloves and we're going to make kind of an ornament to infuse into our cream. So I have an onion here. I'm gonna take a bay leaf just like that, and I'm going to kind of pierce it with the clove. And it's almost like a Christmas ham. I feel like in making ham, at least mm. in America, we would stud it with some mm -hmm. cloves. So we're gonna do that to this onion right here. And that looks so pretty already. And then I have my mace, and I'm just going to drop it into the milk. So we're gonna light this up. So we're going to bring this to a simmer and we're gonna let this sit and infuse and get all of those flavors. And then we're going to add our bread. But before we put our bread in, we need to soak it with a little bit of yes. water. Right. <laughs> Not too hot. Yeah. A little bit. Just so that it softens. 
Let's give it a little mix. And what this is going to do is it's going to help soften the stale bread and it's going to be the thickening agent for our sauce, hence bread sauce. Okay, that looks really good. A plus. Excellent. <laughs> Mosley's done a wonderful job. Now that we have a little time to wait for our bread sauce, we're gonna work on some quail. Now, I'm gonna have to get my hands dirty with some butter. Right. So I'm gonna need your assistance okay. to getting these together. They're tiny, aren't they? They really are. So you get one each, is that the idea? As an appetizer or two as an entree, which I think I would still be hungry. Yes. I'm putting a lot of butter on this because this is the key to making it nice and juicy and you can't be shy with the butter. I guess they dry out, don't they, if they, you... Yeah, they do. I do need you to pass the salt and pepper. Yeah. And I'm gonna get you to help me season this. Okay. So you, quail is very similar to chicken. I think the meat is darker. But in flavor, how would you describe it? I don't think I've ever tasted it before. Really? Why so surprised? It's not quite gamey, even though I guess it's considered as a game bird, but it's quite delicious and it just doesn't have too much meat on them. So it's the perfect appetizer. So I'm just it's gonna- It's a lot of effort for a very small meal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be delicious. That is something to look forward to. How was it working on Downton Abbey? It was great fun. I mean, obviously, I never spent any time in the kitchen. Um, Mrs. Patmore wouldn't allow that. Good night, Mr. Mosley. All I did was serve this wonderful stuff. And Mr. Mosley, remember to breathe. Yeah. Gentlemen. There was a lot of choreography involved in yeah. the serving. I remember quite early on when I was first doing it, I was always crashing into the furniture or sort of, because it it's was all terribly well choreographed. You have to sort of serve at a certain time and you, you, the idea is not to interrupt people's conversation. <clears throat> I was always sort of spoiling the shot because I was coming in at the wrong time or serving I, the yeah, wrong person. I feel like and, you have to have like good core muscles oh yes, you have. to stand there and do this yeah, yeah, yeah. and not spill. Yeah. I don't think I would. I would be successful at that. We will do our best, Mr. Wilson. I don't want your best. I want far better than your best. Our bread sauce has simmered, and now we're gonna let that infuse. I'm gonna need you to grab the spoon right there. We're going to kind of stir it up just so that it's all submerged. Okay. And that looks really good. And then do you mind putting that pot just a little bit over so that it's kind of out of our way? Okay. Because we need. I'm gonna get you closer here so you can help me season this quail. So, I have my quail here, I've buttered it, I've given it a nice massage, and now I'm gonna need you to help me season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Right. And so whenever seasoning, you wanna season from both inside and outside, and they're little, so we're gonna just be generous with okay. the salt. Yes. And then I'm gonna open this up, and you're gonna, this is not quite graceful, but yeah. it's required. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna add, I would say, a little bit more. Okay. Don't be shy. We like salt here. Perfect. And that then some off. pepper. Okay. Yeah. Amazing. So the key to making sure our quail is not dry is to rub it down with butter and to tie it together. So we're gonna grab some of those grape leaves and oh, we're going cool. to basically kind of make a little blanket over the breast of the quail, just right. like that. These are these are grape leaves. Yes. And why do we why do we wrap them? They serve two purposes. So they help retain moisture and it has a nice subtle flavor to the quail. So we're going to add a little bit more flavor than just salt, pepper, and butter and grape leaves. We want to add a little bit of this bacon. So I'm going to, because my hands are already meaty, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this with bacon, just like that. And we're going to tie it together. And the bacon's going to be nice. It's fatty, mm. it's smoky, and it's just going to give it another delicious element and it's gonna keep it from getting too dry as well. So we're gonna wrap these up. They're already starting to look pretty, but the hard part is tying it together. Right. Or at least for one person. So this is where I'm gonna need your help. Have you ever trussed a bird before? No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start, and I'm gonna need you to help me cut. 
So be careful with that, that is sharp. Right. And we're gonna go in like this. So we tie it around the bird, kind of twist it over like that so it crosses in the back. And then we bring it forward. And to make sure it just doesn't dry out, you wanna just kind of make it all into almost like a little ball or dumpling so that they just stay nice and closed mm -hmm. like that. And so we're going to tie this. I'm gonna twist it again over its legs, but then I'm gonna have to tie, I'm just gonna do that. And then I'm gonna need you to put your finger right there so okay. you do have to touch it. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm going to tie it again. It's like we're performing surgery. I know. All right. The poor things that look so undignified. <laughs> <laughs> and now will you help me just cut that? Right, okay. Now I should cut down. Yeah, that might there be safer. Go. There we go. So then we have something that looks like this. And I have a pan. There's a pan right there. I'm just going to boss you around this kitchen. Yeah, yeah, good. <laughs> and so here we go. I'm going to also give you the task of adding some butter to the pan because it's always nice to have just a nice little layer yeah. on the bottom of the pan so that it doesn't stick. Okay. And, you know, we want this to be really delicious. So I'm giving you a couple of tasks. So here we have that. I'm just gonna tie it like that. Then That's I'm quite a just... skill. I know, right? I like to make it a little fancy and cross their legs like this. Yeah. <laughs> I know, make it a little bit more ladylike. So will you put your finger right there yeah. again? I wouldn't like to have to prepare like 30 of those. Yeah. Um, and I don't think anyone should, but I guess <laughs> Mrs. Patmore probably yes, did. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. Will you of. give me a, I know. <laughs> but I mean, this is a really great technique to, to have for when you're ro roasting something like a chicken. Mm. You think you want to try to do oh, this? Oh, I should have been concentrating more. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll have All to right. go. It's okay. I'm going to coach you the whole way. All right. Okay. So you're going to put that, look. Over. You already got it. Yeah. Over, under, cross. And then we're going to flip it. Yeah. You're a professional. I should have made you do this the whole time. And then we're going to we're going to make her a little ladylike. Oh, yes. that, cross that leg. So it's just it just looks prettier. Yeah. Awesome. Look at that. And then I need yes, the finger. <laughs> I think yours might be prettier than mine. I'm just going to leave it to you now. You say he used to work here. Yes, but we weren't aware of his hidden talents. Now we're going to roast this, and I need you to help me put it into the oven. I have a question. How, how long would something like that need? You just basically want to cook the quail just enough that it is fully cooked, about mm. 165 degrees, and then no more, because okay. then it risks drying it out. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and put this in. All right. And... There we have it. So what happens now? The bread goes into that? Yes, the bread okay. goes into it, and this is the thing that will thicken it, but I need you to help me check for consistency. So I'm going to add in our soaked bread right into the milk. And if there's extra water, you can kind of wring it out with just your spoon or your hands if you want to get your hands into it. Here we go. And we're going to whisk this together, and the and the bread's gonna break apart. And it's gonna really form the sauce. Okay, so here we Can go. Can I be honest about the bread sauce? Yeah. It's always served at Christmas, but <laughs> I never eat it. So this will be the first time I've ever eaten it. I feel like this is such a big scandal. <laughs> this is absurd. That would finish Granny off, and Papa too. It'll be an adventure for both of yes, us. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and so I'm just going to break up and whisk the bread. And as it heats up and as it cooks, the bread is going to slowly break down. And we're going to season it with some salt and white pepper. So Why you white pass pepper? Me that? White pepper because it's a white sauce in it. You don't want to necessarily have the specks of black pepper. Okay. And white pepper has a distinct flavor. So mm. we're just going to add a nice pinch of that in there. And this is cream, so do we have Yeah, that? we have some double cream. That's what we're gonna use to finish our sauce, but we're gonna taste it and see. 
Um, but I think I could hear the quails like sizzling. So <laughs> let's see if they're done. I'm gonna I'm gonna come with you okay. to police it. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Oh, it smells fantastic. Okay, do you want to do it or you want me to? Yeah, do I'll it? do it. Yeah. It slides out, so be careful. Okay. Look at that. And then I'm gonna close that up. Ooh. Oh wow, they look fantastic. And now it's Kevin's cooking show. Welcome. I'm abound by the plot synopsis. Look at that. That looks amazing. And of course, I like to kind of base it with a little bit of fat, because it doesn't have enough. <laughs> and just get it nice and glazed. Oh, that looks fantastic. Now we're gonna finish our bread sauce. But with cooking meat, it's really important to let it rest before you eat it. That's another key to keeping it juicy is giving it a break. So I'm gonna switch sides with you. Okay. I love that you saw it and you went for it. Yeah, Perfect. Mrs. Patmore would be proud. All right, so thank you for doing all the hard work and whisking it. Ooh. Is it worth tasting it? To have yeah, it? let's taste it. Let's whisk it just a little bit more. And now that it's nice and thick and we're gonna add a little bit of double cream. Oh. I know. <laughs> Just a few tablespoons. Naughty but nice. I know. And I'm going to be even naughtier and just add just oh, come on. a little, just a little bit. Why not? It's going to make it better. And if it's going to be both of our first times, <laughs> um, I want to make sure it tastes good. OK, so let's do it. I'm a little scared. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, wow, you can really smell all of that, the spices that we infused. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. I'm yeah. Gonna, I want to dip in again, but I went, yeah. that's really lovely. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous, actually. Yeah. Now I know what I've been missing. Well, maybe this Christmas you'll actually yeah. have the bread sauce. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> now that our stuff is done, I'm going to serve you. Excellent. Because you've spent plenty of time serving other people. Ten on years. The, ten years. Oh, wow. Did you ever have to learn how to be a server? Yes, we had a, uh, an historical advisor uh, on set all the time who would tell us, you know, uh, explain to us the etiquette and, uh, uh -huh. and how things were done. I mean, the important thing was that uh, you were to be invisible. You know, if you go into the best restaurants, uh, the service is kind of invisible, isn't it? You, yeah. don't, you never really notice, uh, but it's impeccable. And that's kind of how it should be, you know, in those great houses. Um, yeah. So, the, you know, the conversation can flow and uh, you're not being interrupted by somebody dipping in and saying, we'd like some more potatoes. <laughs> so, so, yeah, yeah, so you, you um, sort of, you know, efficient but invisible. Let's see here. This is a lot of work for a starter, isn't it? I Imagine if you've got to do another six or seven courses after this. Exactly. The chaos in the kitchen. But I think it's, it's, it's an artistry. I, I really do uh, believe that. But it looks so beautiful. It does. You did a really good job. I think yours <laughs> came out better than mine, which I'm pretty jealous. But the bacon has obviously sort of kept it nice and moist as well, hasn't yeah. it? It hasn't dried out at all. Exactly. Everything has a reason for this. Yeah. So here we go. Nice and delicate. Because of all of, you know, the butter that we've put into this, this dish, I'm going to add a little greens. Yeah. It's all about balance. <laughs> So here we go. Just gonna cut a little bit of watercress. A nod to the healthy. Yeah, we're so healthy. This is pretty <laughs> much a salad now. <laughs> okay, so here we go. And a little bit of bread sauce. I'm just gonna put that right on the side. I like to showcase the quail. Mm. So I want it to be like kind of complimentary on the side. People can kind of dip it however much they want. I feel like I'm in a restaurant right now, plating this way. And there we have it. And you could have this one. Oh, excellent. This one is a nice, delicate, beautiful one. All right, shall we? Yes. Cheers. I'm all about the perfect bite. So I want a little piece of bacon, a little bit of the grape leaf, a little yeah. bit of quail. And you can see it's nice and juicy, still a little pink. Oh, that's lovely. Mmm. It's really lovely. 
Now I know what I've been missing. I love the bacon with this. It's nice and salty yeah. with the quail, so you need to make sure it's nice and seasoned. I'm quite surprised with the grape leaves because I think that the grape leaves provides like a brininess to it because we didn't over like we didn't aggressively season the quail, but it has a, the perfect amount of salt to the whole dish. Mm. I mean, between the bacon and the grape leaves, I think it really makes everything pop. Mm. Mm. When when cooking, you always want to put enough salt to where it tastes like what it is, and I really think that all of these flavors combined really mm. Mm. kind of make it nice and bright. And the bread sauce really sort of helps as well, mm -hmm. doesn't it? it? Sort of cuts through all that fat. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, because I put butter and <laughs> double cream into it. Oh, this smacks of the worst excesses of the French Revolution. We should be very proud of ourselves. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm like patting ourselves on the back. See, when we're downstairs at Downton Abbey, you never got quail, you got sort of, you know, egg on toast and things like that. Really? <laughs> we never, yeah, we never got such things. They impose, they demand, and now we're to be made nothing in our own house. It's very disappointing, I won't deny it. There was a scene where Lady Edith had been dumped at her wedding. So we, the servants, all got to eat the wedding feast. Yeah. Uh, so that was the only time we got to eat some sort of fa some fancy food. Otherwise, it was just sort of, you know, beef stew and things like that. I remember because it was it oysters or caviar mm. and then yeah. like Alfred, I That's think, right. was like, why would you eat that? And I'm just like, I would, I'm, I'll be there. But it looks so <laughs> beautiful as well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That's really delicious. Well, I did my best. Well, thank you so much for coming today and having this whole experience with me. I feel like we've bonded over bread sauce. <laughs> so thank you for that. Thank you. We have way more Downs and Dishes coming your way. So join us next time as we come together over our next iconic Downton Abbey inspired recipe.